everybody. Welcome to Prop Live, your weekly prop and costume making Q&A session. I'm Bill. I'm Britt. And today we're just playing it fast and loose. You got the two of us for the next hour or so to answer your prop making questions. And the 3D printers. And we have two 3D printers behind us doing their, their damnedest to make some prop stuff for an upcoming build, actually. That's going to be really, uh, really exciting. Um, I'm not going to spill the beans on that one quite yet, but it's, it's cool. It's a collaboration with someone else. And it's really fun. Yeah, if all goes well, that video will go up next week. So, yes, right? yeah. yes, it will. <laughs> Just reminding you of your deadline. Of how much work I have to get done on that. You'll, you're doing great. I uh, so far, I'm very happy with what I've pulled off. I'm gonna leave it at that. You were working on something. I was. Yeah. On yesterday's live stream, um, I really wanted to make Bill's uh, gun from Firefly. The mm -hmm. one he did the video about. So he put out uh, templates and said at the end of the video, hey, you guys should make your own and yes. then send me a little short video. And I was like, I want to do it. Uh, uh, but I wanted to give myself some some limitations, some restrictions, and challenge myself. So I worked with cardboard on the stream yesterday. And I was working in the spare bedroom with a very limited space. Uh, like I had a, a tiny little cutting mat, and I kept all my materials on there. And it was a mess, and it was really hard to do. Props to all you... Uh, cosplayers and prop makers out there who have to work in tiny environments. I don't know if I can go back to that on a daily basis. I used uh, hot glue mainly was the adhesive that ended up working. Cardboard. The cats were a pain. They did not help. And this is this is what I got. I'll move it by really fast because this isn't supposed to be seen up close. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, this is it. Turned out all right. <laughs> I don't know what's going on down here. Uh, the barrel ended up being really fat, but it's 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 a thing. It's a thing made out of cardboard. Yeah. Turns out cardboard's hard to work with when you don't know what you're doing. I've um, seen some people though who do work with a lot more yes. a lot more cardboard a lot more frequently and pull off some really impressive stuff. Yeah, I brought up on the stream. There's that uh, cardboard challenge for. The project with Adam Savage. Remember that? Harrison entered it. Yes, that's And he made right. an amazing cardboard camera. Yeah. Um, I just, I wasn't expecting it to act a lot like uh, foam in that you can do undercuts and, like, get your bevels that way. So I made a boxy gun and then had to hack away at it. I should have planned ahead. So, like, it's all like, right. like, that part looks good. But this, I just left a giant box. I left it as a giant box. But... But it's done. Yeah. You'll have a done. video up on that. Yeah. And the wood grain on it goes this way because the cardboard corrugated thing goes that way. And I tried to do wood grain this way and it didn't work. Yeah. So I should have planned it to have the cardboard at an angle. Mm hmm Just like anything, the second one would be better. So. It will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I see questions getting thrown in the chat for questions. Go to punishprops.com slash live. There's a form there. Fill it out. Send your question in that way. It's the easiest way to do it. Yeah, I'm grabbing the questions now. Um, Thank you for submitting them. Yes. So send them that way. Awesome. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, oh, I made my ring. This I'll have a video. We did a, a casting video last week, but I will have a full video on this build up. Uh, sometime tomorrow. There we go. The original was 3D printed and then it was molded and cast in pewter. And I've been wearing it for about a week now and it's holding up okay. Um, I will say anytime I touch anything in the shop, any tool that's metal, this gets scratched. Um, so I imagine maybe this is the sort of ring I would only wear out on special occasions. Maybe not every day in the shop. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that video is going up tomorrow. I'm excited to share that with you guys. The uh, p the original was printed on the Form 2 when we had that, and that thing is amazing. Uh, let's see here. Oh, tonight, right? Directly after this, we're going to get in the car, grab a bunch of our stuff, and go to the Soto Maker Space in Seattle. We're going to fight the crowd because there's a, a sports ball game in that same area. There's mm -hmm. a, I think Seahawks are playing tonight. Uh, but we're doing a bit of a, a social uh, show and tell for prop and costume makers at the Soto Maker Space tonight. And a whole bunch of people signed up, so we're going to go hang out with them, have some pizza, yeah. and talk shop. I'm excited to see the Maker Space. I haven't been there yet, and I yeah. hear they have awesome tools. It's pretty cool. They yeah. have a giant laser cutter. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's one of those things where like if you don't have that any of their tools in your workspace at home, you should just go there. Just, just live there. 
just bring a cot yeah and then just sleep in the corner i mean like that is such a such a cool space so i'm excited me too so that'll yeah. be really fun like i said we're bringing a bunch of stuff to show off some stuff we're working on um what else was there Burp. oh i wanted to point out too when we're there this evening we'll i'll shoot some video i'm gonna bring my camera and a lot of the extra stuff we've been doing, the the live show now, and extra videos that we do, more vlog type stuff, those are all going on our second channel, Punished Props Extras. And if you haven't subscribed to that already, you should go over there. This is all of the additional stuff. So we have a, um, a vlog where we went to the sci-fi museum with Evil Ted, which was really fun. He is a wealth of information on yes. props from the industry so it's you, so cool if you haven't watched that yet um go check it out um my video from blizzcon is over there what else all of our q a's so that's just a way to keep our main channel more dedicated to just tutorial content and builds and this other channel is for it gives us a little bit more flexibility to try some other stuff so head on over there if you want to get that extra goodness from us to the uh punished props extras channel and uh, there you go. Thanks for joining us tonight, you guys. If you haven't already, you want to submit your qu your questions to us, punishprops.com slash live. And you can do that anytime during the week. Um, at the end of every episode, we take all any leftover questions. We just delete them so that we have a fresh batch every week. So, but we usually get through everything. But anyway, submit your questions. Prop and costume related usually tutorial stuff uh if you have something you're working on and you need a hand with um go for it uh or if you just want to know a little bit more about how we do what we do here at punish props feel free to drop those questions in there uh, that's all i've got you have anything you want to do before we dive in i think that's it i got a bunch of new questions thank you guys for that. submitting very them very, very yeah good. okay we got our wonderful prop charts ready to go we got some questions and the first one comes from Deathbright, who wants to know if we're excited for tonight. I do believe Deathbright is going to be there. Yay! Yeah, she's going to be there. Yeah. I think. Unless, unless you're just excited for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're stoked. I, I've been jonesing for an excuse to do more stuff locally, more mm. stuff with, uh, with other people locally, more reasons to leave our basement. So yeah, I'm, it turns out there's a lot of cool stuff out there. Yes. Like, it's it's really neat, and it's probably been there for, like, years. We just haven't gone outside. Yeah. <laughs> so we're excited. Yeah. Uh, very, very excited. Yeah. And pizza. So. I'm, I'm jealous at the idea of, like, growing up with a makerspace nearby. Like, I didn't even know what that was. Yeah. Uh, back, well, they didn't yeah. have them when yeah. we were back when we were kids. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, Death Bright also wants to know, I find myself drawn to fan art very often. What kind of things, like armor, are you drawn to? What do you like working on the best? I bounce back and forth between sci-fi and fantasy. Uh, I've been kind of on a sci-fi kick lately. Um, I really really like the uh, Deus Ex game. The, kind of the, the aesthetic of that world. Yeah, it's like... Um... Uh, I, I would want to say cyberpunk. Yeah. It's it, it's kind of like that. I mean, it's a little dirtier sci-fi, a little more uh, kind of like not clean stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm more of a more of a sci-fi kick right now, but I it ebbs and flows. Something cool will happen. Uh, I'll go see a movie or I'll play a new video game that's got like some really cool aesthetic that I like, and I'll be like, now I want to do that. Yeah, I like just about everything. Yeah. Um, I, except, like, I don't have an urge to build things that look like they already exist. So if there's a gun that looks like it's one you could just buy, or um, and uh, like a costume that looks like a military uniform, um, it's it's just <laughs> like contempt something contemporary. Yeah, yeah, or even like I don't know, um, even like uh, period clothing, like like renaissance wear mm -hmm. i like seeing it but i just don't have the urge to make it yeah it's something like there's something about taking a style that doesn't really exist out in the world yet and and or incorporating anymore. it yeah like yeah. hobbit clothing yeah 
Yeah. So there you go. That's what that's what I tend to to lean towards. I'm feeling space guns and sci-fi stuff right now. I'm feeling fantasy. Yeah. I think. I'm right. in that mood. Like I want to play Skyrim again. Um, Luau Kuga in the chat is very excited. Uh, he used his Twitter account today for the first time to show us him and his son working on Mal's gun with cardboard. That's awesome! Hey, look, cardboard! Woohoo! Yeah, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cardboardy. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I love I love seeing your guys' builds, by the way. Just going on, on an aside right now. Mm -hmm. I've seen a ton of people doing the Skyrim armor and Mal's gun, and I am so stoked every time I see one of those to know that, like, you, put, you guys probably wouldn't have started that if I hadn't done a video on it. So to know that I inspired you guys to try that project out makes me feel awesome yeah and i'm really excited to see um those males guns finished up i see core geek in the chat he's doing one out of wood that looks awesome uh the prop tart page there you go the prop tart page that someone just linked that's me there you go uh <laughs> people have been sharing their builds over there and it's been awesome yeah i really like seeing uh the builds where you take the knowledge that bill puts out there and then you're like then you just make your own costume mm -hmm. too like uh i don't know if you've been following the shredder uh, it's all made out of foam. Yes. They just had their holiday party and and won the, the, the costume prize. Got first place. So, yeah. Prop tarts represent. That's right. At their, at their holiday work party. I have bad news about my computer mouse. The battery died. <laughs> well, it's, oh, if only you had batteries. My batteries are very close. Right next to you. All right. That's all right. Um, Anders says, when, if at all, will you start taking on more commission clients? Uh, probably... It's on an indefinite hiatus, let's say. Yeah, we need to update a lot of stuff on our website, just like general information, like upcoming conventions and our, our, our stance on commissions. Yeah. I'm thinking that the commission thing will make more clear and just be like, hey, yeah, we're not doing them, unless it's for <coughs> maybe a company that we really like. Because otherwise, we're just making tutorial videos for you guys. Right. We don't have time to make you know, things for, for sale so much anymore. Yep, it's just it's just I just don't want to do commissions anymore. It's the main thing. I would rather spend my time building something for me or for a friend and then making content around it. That's how I would prefer to spend my time. Um, which is ironic because I got into this because I love making stuff for myself, and then while I was doing commission work for years, I never got to make anything for myself. It was always something for someone else. But now I'm kind of getting back into making stuff for myself again. So, TLDR. Probably not ever again. Oh, Eric in the chat says, yeah, if you're working on the uh, Malcolm Reynolds gun build, if you use the hashtag PP100K, that you will see other people's guns they're working on. Uh, I'm going to search for that right yeah, now on Twitter. I, I know Eric's been using it on Instagram. Uh, well, let's see, what, let's see what's on Twitter. Hashtag PP100K. Searching for... All right. Yeah, look at that. Oh, is that one out of foam? Oh, oh that's uh, Zach. Zach's Zach, working on Zach's it. Zach's making his out of foam. Looks that's like it. Be cool. Is he really using a file on there? Wow. <laughs> Why not? I mean, I'll find out if it doesn't work out. Yep. Well, yeah, you removed the texture. Oh, his looks better than mine. I need, um, I need to put more effort into my cardboard. PP, on, on Twitter, at least, PP100K uh, is taken by something. For a Portugal thing? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Let's check Instagram. <laughs> All right, we'll check that one too. Uh, search, Boop. and thirteen posts. Yeah, look at this. Oh, this is awesome. That's so cool. Uh, there's this guy, but there's also uh, there's Eric's. Uh, whose is this? Nacho props. Yeah. Yeah, nacho props. That's awesome. Um, this one here is strange Brit props. A little bit of progress on that one. That's so cool. Um, there's Eric's again. I want to make one out of foam. I, Silent I, Warlock cosplays 3D printing it. Oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. That is really neat. Uh, and then the rest are Eric, I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. Cool. Thanks for getting that started, Eric. Um, let's grab another question. The last one came to us from Anders. Thank you, Anders. Uh, Rose says, do you have any good tips for painting something that you don't want to look beaten up in the final product especially if the piece is black i have a piece of armor that is black but it needs to look more new however 
I know detail, detail won't show if it isn't highlighted. Yeah, it's really tricky if you have a dark, flat color like black um, and there isn't any edge weathering on it or any contrast. It's, it's going to look very flat. Um, but here, I'll give you an example. My cell phone. The uh, next question is uh, similar as well. Yeah. I put them together. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, Matt says, any tips on shading or weathering a black prop or armor piece? So my uh, cell phone case is black, and it's aluminum, and I believe it's anodized. But the edge of it is still shiny. Uh, focus. Uh oh, it still wants to see your face. Focus. There we go. Okay. But the edge of it, the, the anodization is still worn off. It looks flat and black. <laughs> but the edge of it is still shiny and kind of silver. It is more of a subtle effect, though, because this is a finish that has worn off over lots and lots of time uh, putting it into and taking it out of my pocket. Um, so it's kind of a tricky thing to get. Some very subtle dry brushing with like just a brush and some silver paint very very subtle on just the edge um to try and call out that edge you're not trying to highlight it you're just trying to create a tiny bit of contrast uh the i was wondering if these questions came in because of the death trooper that's oh. in the new rogue one that's just speculation uh tessa just put up a video on getting to check out the Anovos death trooper helmet it's shiny black and that's kind of a good way to it's almost like like, white has the same problem, but with black, at least the highlights are going to look white. Uh, yeah. So, a white, shiny prop, you almost don't even see the shiny bits. This is really cool. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, Tested put up a video on... Uh, I'll, I'll drop a link in the old chat chatteroo there. Um, they did a video showing off this new helmet, and at the end of the video, they have measurements, which I think is just really, really cool. Um, but you can see the, the black sort of shininess on the, uh, this video is actually a tiny bit underexposed, so it's kind of hard to see how, see the contrast in there. But, um, actually, let's go back. It's neat that they did this, though. Yeah, you could, something you can do is, the, the, most of the helmet is shiny, but these lighter spots, these, these vertical lines that are lighter, um, if they're matte, if you just mask it off and spray it with like some matte clear coat or a matte black spray paint or a matte airbrush or whatever, um, they'll all be black, but those there'll be a little bit of contrast there because the matte color will, will look a little bit different. Uh, it really depends on the thing you're making, but um, yeah, start playing with specularity, just some really, really subtle dry brushing, um, and maybe some some shininess some really really shininess but definitely go watch that video because it's awesome <laughs> yeah yeah it's hard because uh um matt's question is for shading and weathering that's a little easier than uh rose is looking for a clean yeah clean prop. because if it's dirty you can just think about the environment it's in and in the crevices put some browns in there right um, or some yellow some lighter, ochres yeah, or something yeah some lighter dust yeah uh that that would be helpful that's like with the uh the white stormtroopers they have some brown dust in the crevices if they're in that environment and it makes it makes it have a lot more depth mm -hmm. but for clean stuff that is super hard yep yep um all of these things are require a subtle touch so a lot of pra a little bit of practice goes a long way um to try and figure out to get exactly the effect you're trying to go for so those questions came from rose and matt thank you guys very much the next question comes to us from tim What's the best way to smooth out Chavant clay and make a really even and smooth surface? So if you're sculpting something and you've mashed a bunch of stuff on your clay and it's kind of got an uneven surface, uh, I've, I haven't done a ton of sculpting like this, but I do know that a rake can help you a lot. It's like a wooden or a metal thing with teeth on it. And as you rake across your the surfaces, it'll start to chew through the layers until it's down fairly flat and then you can use some other tools to flatten it out a little bit uh so look for a rake uh let's see sculpting rake um hey actually if you go to the complete sculptor this is a really oops a really good uh resource 
they have a listing for all kinds of clay uh, clay tools or, or sculpting tools, I should say. Um, these guys are awesome. Let's see here. Uh, Sculpt.com, by the way. Yeah, their their website isn't the prettiest, but it works really well, and their stuff's awesome. It gets the job done. Yeah. Um, so they have all kinds of really cool sculpting tools. This is this is a um, uh, a rabbit hole you could easily jump down. Uh, scrapers, rakes. Here we go. Yeah, Ooh. like those things. Look at those. Those are cool. What those kind of super, clay super cool. is Shavon? Is it oil? I think it's clay? like a wax based. Wax. Yeah. Because I've used monster clay recently, and that was wax based. But that's we my only experience. Yeah, we don't have a ton of experience with like traditional sculpting. Mm. So there you go. There's some tools for you to try out with your uh, with your sculpting. Hey, time jumpers here. Hey. Hey, TJ. Good to hang with you, buddy. Um, a quick reminder, gang, if you haven't already, head on over to PunishProps.com slash live and submit any of your prop and costume making questions or any general Q&A for me and Britt this fine evening. We'll be happy to answer them for you. Kind of like this question from Nerdy Views. Uh, Nerdy Views wants to know, how did your 2016 goals go and what were, what are your goals for 2017? I haven't dove through my 2017 goals yet. Where am I? We'll have to do a goals. Uh, my, my goals are right here. Yeah, we'll have to do a goals episode again because you did. Was that a year ago? The last time you did that. Uh huh. Wow. I'm I'm curious how all the prop tarts goals are going too. The ones who watched that episode, because I know some people made goals. Yeah, well, I'll do a quick recap. Uh, published two books. I only did one. I kind of kind of fell short on that. I really should have got uh, my other book done. Um, 150,000 YouTube subscribers was my goal, and we're at 100, almost 130. I think That's we had 130, good. yeah. It's pretty good. If we get 20,000 more in the next week, then yeah, we'll hit it. Um, but up from 65, so we've doubled, mm -hmm. yeah, we've doubled it. Yeah, pretty well, awesome. Bill likes to set high goals. I do. You might as well. Um... I made a goal for YouTube ad revenue. We're just about there. I made a goal for gross revenue for our business, which we did, uh, we beat, which is awesome. Um, overall, we did pretty great. Uh, some of the things that we've tracked were zero before, and they're still zero now. So now I know that's not really, not really a priority. Yeah, so I will reevaluate those going into 2017. Things that aren't going to happen. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> we have enough stuff to do. But overall, we did pretty good. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. I do know that there are going to be some goals reset for next year that are going to be completely different than stuff we've done before in the past. Because we really, there's some other areas in my life, I, not even for the business, but just areas in my life that I want where I want to push myself uh, to try new things. And setting goals is a good way to do it. Um, yeah. Go big or go home. That's right, Brooks Creations. Go big or go home. All right. That was a good question. Thank you, Nerdy Views. Uh, Big Sexy Matt wants to know, do you have any recommendations on which 3D printer I should buy as a first-time printer? I have a decent amount of 3D printing knowledge, so I don't want a little beginner printer. Really depends on your on your budget, I would say. Yeah, and we were talking about this recently. Um, if it's a hobby, I could totally see getting a kit and putting it together and getting to know how to use every single part and, and completely understand how your printer works. Uh, for us as a business, we don't have time to own a printer like that. So we like the plug and play yep. printers and I don't care how it works as long as it works. So, and if, if I get a nice one that doesn't need maintenance, I don't really have to <laughs> learn all the parts of it. Uh, we can tell you the experience we've had with a couple of printers. Mm -hmm. We have the Ultimaker right now, which is going, doing its thing, which is a fantastic printer. It's got a great print volume. It can print with a variety of materials, and it's uh, fairly expensive. The uh, Dremel right next to it there is a lot cheaper at about 1000 bucks, and that guy has been a champ. Mm -hmm. Now, it'll only do PLA, but we usually we print in PLA for the most part anyway. Uh, so it's not as flexible, but it's still got a pretty good print volume, and it's incredibly reliable. It worked right out of the box, no problem. Uh, I have heard lots of people say they like this this guy here, the um, the Prusa. 
I3 Mark II. Is that the one that Bob did the video on? Yes. Okay. Um, this guy is really, like, the. I think the most bang for your buck right here. Uh, it's a pretty good size print volume. Um, this is for the kit, 700 bucks. I think for a couple hundred more bucks, they'll send you one that works right out of the box. Um, but I've heard it, the print quality compared to that of the Ultimaker, which is really impressive. It's just printing a giant cube. Yeah. Send that to Harrison. That would anger him. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's about all I know. For for uh, I haven't tried a lot of different 3D printers, but if you go to 3D.pn, the 3D printing nerd, uh, he does a lot of reviews. Um, Joel telling our buddy Joel. And uh, who else? Tom. There's a guy, another guy named Tom, a German dude who does some really good 3D printer reviews. These are guys who do lots of 3D printing, lots of reviews. They've tried a lot of different machines and materials, mm -hmm. and they know what they're talking about. I have only tried a couple of... Uh, here we go. Thomas Sandlanderer. Rurer. Rurer. This guy. He's been testing different filaments. Like, he's, he's got his act together. Yeah, Hashtag he's Filloween. Um, so we'll put links to their stuff in the sh in the show notes. You guys ought to go check all of those out. Tom Sandlander. There we go. That pretty much goes for any kind of tools that we use. Mm -hmm. We've only ever used really a couple of them, like a couple different kinds of band saws, one scroll saw. Like we don't uh, have the experience of trying out a different kind of the same tool. Unless it breaks, we have to get another one. Right. So it's... It's we well we have works or the the bandsaw that I have, um, the big one I have. Someone was selling a friend of mine was selling it, so I'm like I guess I'll get that one. Yeah, it wasn't like we did any research on it. We no. like, just kind of fell into. Same thing with my um, drill press. There was a big drill press for sale on on uh, Craigslist. That was a, a pretty good price, so I bought it. Yeah, I needed a drill press. That's I was our like, mm, that one. That's our second drill press. So yeah, yeah. Um, I do know that the one I got from Harbor Freight was terrible. Yes. So. <laughs> like most tools from Harbor Freight. All right. Thank you, Big Sexy Matt. That was a good question. Good luck on your 3D printer uh, hunt. Our buddy Baca has a question. How indispensable a tool has 3D printing become to your prop making? Um, oh, and curious about PLA versus ABS. Uh, I, I've actually got some experience messing with abs today hooray um that ma these machines are great i love using them my skill set is very custom fit for using a 3d printer and so for example the, the project i'm working on right now that's a secret you'll see next week uh there are a couple of parts that i could totally have made um through traditional means but i needed a couple of them just a couple not enough to really justify making a mold so I was like, oh, machine, print them. And now they're printing those parts out. They're going to fit together with some mechanical pieces or some uh, electrical pieces, some lights. Uh, they'll fit perfectly because I measured them all. I got my calipers around here there, so I just measured everything. It works just fine. And then these machines are working while we're doing the live show. How convenient is that? You Pretty know, awesome. You know a material is the future for prop and costume making? What's that? Cardboard. Cardboard. <laughs> Make everything out of cardboard. Cardboard Smith. New book coming soon. Cardboard. 20, 2017. I would have to practice for a year before I get good at cardboard smithing. It's it is it is not a forgiving material. No. Uh, as far as ABS and PLA, that machine is printing in PLA right now, and that machine is printing in ABS. And I wanted to use ABS because I really haven't had much experience with it. Uh, and I've been having some trouble getting it to stick down to the build plate. so. And that comes back to us just needing plug-and-play options. Right. I, we don't have time to fiddle and add adhesives and babysit a print. We just need it to work. Yeah, so if I print it in PLA, it's kind of a pain to sand, but I'm good at sanding already, so I'll just do that, I guess. Um, although, like I said, I do want to get this machine printing in, in ABS. It is a little easier to sand. Mm -hmm. Um, so there you go. That's kind of my, my take on the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of ABS, so I should probably use it, I guess. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Baka. It's a great question. 
Let's grab a couple more here. Uh, have you ever had experience? This one comes from GTC30. Have you ever had experience using gesso to seal props? I, I have not. I know Bob Ross used to use it. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, you might want to talk to Core Geek, who I believe is still in the chat. Uh, I know he's used it. I, I'm pretty sure he's used it to help seal and smooth and sand out Warbla. I'm pretty sure. He'll correct me if he's in the chat. But otherwise, I've never used gesso, not even for its intended purpose. I didn't do a lot of painting in art school. I did mostly drawing. I don't. Yeah, I don't think we've ever owned a container. Um, no. It doesn't... I don't think unless you add a lot of it, it's really too useful for foam because it i don't think it's flexible but i've never used it so i don't know, yeah, I don't know. um i know it, it's one of those things where it's great on warbla but i don't even think i think svelana uses wood glue like i don't even know if she used to use gesso but you might want to go check out kamui cosplay's work mm -hmm. and see if she has any information on her site there you go bob ross also used titanium white yes and phthalo blue and I can't think of any more colors. And happy trees. Uh, thank you for the question, GTC30. Adrian has a question. Any tips on easy cleaning of airbrushes where paint dried inside fully? I actually have a lot of experience with that because I am forgetful and I leave paint in, uh, in the uh, airbrush all the time. Yes. It's not the cheapest but it's worth picking up an ultrasonic cleaner mm -hmm. and i think it was like 30 bucks 30 35 bucks i'm looking up on amazon right now ultrasonic cleaner they're you can use anything in them though like they're designed to clean watches and yeah. glasses and so like I've, I've cleaned my shop glasses and an ultrasonic cleaner so we don't just use it for our airbrush yeah this one's 25 dollars got pretty good reviews it's on amazon prime you can clean all your jewelries yeah it has a little tray that um is removable that one's not as cute as ours ours looks like a little face an owl face if you want one that's got a slightly higher rating oh yeah that one's ours and the same photoshop jewelry in it <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute only mirrored uh, you can go with that one. We've been using that one, and it's really good. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, um, you do have to, it's not like you throw your paint-covered airbrush just in that without trying to clean it first. Uh, you want to get as much off as you can using, um, some kind of solvent. Yep. Do you like to use lacquer thinner? Or uh, acetone? lacquer thinner will, will work. Yeah. Acetone will work. Yeah. Uh, rubbing alcohol, usually. Mm -hmm. If, if you... If you're cleaning your airbrush right after you used it, which is what you should do, which I forget to do, run some uh, rubbing alcohol through that or isopropyl alcohol through that to clean it out. Um, that'll help a bunch, especially if you're just using acrylics. I'll look for a link. Um, I don't think it's one of their premium videos. On Tested, uh, Frank showed how he likes to clean his airbrush. I learned a couple tips from that, so I'll, I'll link that Very in the good. show notes. Very good. Cool. Yeah. Um, I see our buddy uh, Jeff aka scorpion in the chat is talking about fiddling with abs talking about the printer again uh what i found is um i'm using uh the normal settings for abs with uh, the ultimaker software with ultimaker material the main thing is that my bed wasn't properly aligned and i had to fidget with it to get it just right now with PLA, it's it'll it'll stick down no problem, especially on that Dremel. But with the ABS, if it was off the bed a little bit on that first layer, it was not sticking down, which was a pain. So I had to level and re-level the bed a couple times to get it just right. To get it just right, uh, and even even so, it's only okay. But it, it's working out all right. That's mostly where the where the tinkering has come for me. I am now completely distracted. Hey, Patch linked something called Box Wars. What? It's where people make cardboard armor and fight each other. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he uh, he linked it in the chat. You just want to click on it. Um, or just look at images. Yep. Yep, there they are. Make sure there's no naked people. 
just covered by cardboard. That looks pretty incredible. Yeah, it does. I like the the siege weapons in the the one of the upper pictures there. Where? Oh, the, oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> That's incredible. This is a rabbit hole I'm not sure I want to go down there of learning how to make things out of cardboard. That's I love remarkable. it. Very cool. Box Very wars. Cool. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Let's grab another question. That last one came to us from uh, Adrian. Good luck cleaning your fully dried airbrush. Gregory says, what's your favorite kind of property to make besides space guns? Is that a trick question? Is there other things to make besides space <laughs> guns? <laughs> You're an intergalactic arms dealer. Is your job title, I it's believe. It's true. Yeah. It is, that is my job title. Um, I don't know. Let me think. I'm doing a giant weapon right now. That is n not a space gun. Not a, technically a space gun. I'm doing a space gun. I just finished a space gun. <laughs> Uh, and then after that, I, I really want to make, um, just just because it's fun, I want to make some RC cars. I did one of those last year. I'd like to do some more of those. Um, and then uh, I like my little robot guy. That was kind of fun. Maybe a combination of some sort of little model robot thing with moving parts and radio controls. That sounds really fun, too. So that's kind of what's tickling my fancy right now. Britt, you, you jones in for anything? I want to make a costume. Mm -hmm. I don't really care what it is anymore. <laughs> just want to make something. But I have some other projects I want to finish first. So. All right. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for the question, Gregory. Next one comes to us from Scott. What recommendation on heat guns do you have? Uh, do I need to spend a lot? Uh, planning on heating PVC pipe or transforming it? I'll show you the one we got. Bought it locally. Heat gun. Yeah. Boop. $12. I bought this at Harbor Freight. I don't usually recommend getting tools you're going to use a lot at Harbor Freight, but this guy I have had for like five years. It has never broken. I use it almost every day, mm -hmm. and I can vouch for it. And if it breaks, then you can just go buy another one because it's only $12. I would not blow a lot of money on a heat gun. He wants to use it to heat PVC pipes. So That'll that, work. That should be just fine. Just don't heat it too far. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, how do you prevent it from kinking? Uh, you talked about that in your Foamsmith 2 book. Just be careful when you bend it so it doesn't form a kink instead of bending slowly. Um, there's ways. There are different ways to do it. You could wrap a spring around it. Oh, um, that's fancy. But uh, basically, if you're heating up PVC with a heat gun and it turns brown, that means it's burning and it's probably releasing uh, chlorine gas, and that's really bad. So if you're heating up a piece of PVC and it starts to burn, set it down and leave the room for a little while. Mm -hmm. Throw it outside. Yeah. Things like that. <laughs> uh, there you go. Recommendation on a heat gun. Go, uh, go grab that one from Harbor Freight, Scott. It's a good one. The D says, what tool do you wish you had? Vacuum form table. Vacuum like, form table. Like, like a good, a big, real legit one. one. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't need to be gigantic, but our little toaster oven one isn't, isn't cutting it for bigger things. I want a mill, like a machining mill. And uh, I got to use one when I was down in L.A., and it was awesome. And there's a big Bridgeport one, which wouldn't fit in our basement. Uh, but I don't need one that big. I could get a, just a fairly big one uh, for doing some machining and milling Ooh. of metal parts. Ooh, what would you make? Would you make a space gun? I would make Han Solo's DL-44 blaster. I would also probably make uh, Malcolm Reynolds' gun again out of metal. That'd be really and cool. And then I'd probably make the gun from... Uh... Cardboard? <laughs> <laughs> the gun from Blade Runner. Yes, as soon as I get a mill, I'm going to make three space guns. You know what's funny, too, is, like, I'm not even a gun nut. We don't even have any real guns. We don't even know the names of gun parts. I don't know what the parts are called, but I just like space guns. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's that whole, like, it's usually a cool character that wields it, so it's that yeah. whole being invested in the oh. cool character. And I want to make uh, Vash the Stampede's gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's been on your list for a long, Very long time. time. 
Let's see here. Thanks, the D. Good question. Habiteer Workshop wants to know. Uh, if we tried the coffee, no, not yet. We're saving it probably this weekend. There's a whole process. There was instructions and a little tiny cup, very tiny cup. Uh, it looks fancy yeah. though. And condensed milk. Like there's a whole thing. We'll get to it this weekend. I think, uh, he also wants to know, how do you cast clear without a pressure pot? Basically you need a resin that's going to take a long time to cure. If it's a very small thing, you can use an epoxy, mm -hmm. um, but big things I don't think work well with epoxy. I they even say that when you, when, if you like go to uh, Tap Plastics website and uh, look up there, they, they call it like little gem epoxy curing stuff. It says, you know, up to one inch in diameter. Any bigger than that, it doesn't really cure. There are urethanes for casting and clear, like Smooth On has Crystal Clear 204. And it has a 48 hour cure time. So, so most of the time, if you're, if you don't have a pressure pot, whatever it is you're casting needs to take a long time to cure. So that the bubbles have time to evacuate on their own. If you're casting with smooth cats, smooth cast 300, it cures in about five minutes or it kicks at least. That's not enough time for all the bubbles to get out. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to use an epoxy, like you were saying. Yeah, I guess that's technically a resin, too. I didn't yeah. think about that. So you're talking about urethanes. I was talking about epoxies. Right. Yeah. Um, so here's the the crystal clear The uh, bummer thing. Yeah, I'm so afraid to buy that. Look at the giant thing in bold. It just says not for home use. And yeah. it's like, oh, uh, I don't want to die. It's... So just keep all of that in mind. But essentially, whatever resin you're using, you want to pick something that does take a long time to cure. A lot of people make those little gems... Uh, and they'll use an epoxy and they'll tint it and it usually takes eight to ten to more hours to cure Yeah, which uh, is great though because how the bubbles escape mm -hmm. and that's awesome if you don't need to produce a lot of them quickly Yeah um, Hey patch is r Super quick uh, question about the um, vacuum form table and using a heat gun instead of heating elements I have never got that to work. It, I think it depends on the plastic. I wonder um, I don't know their different uh, melting points off the top of my head, but PETG will absolutely not deform enough with no. a heat gun unless you're doing a very, very tiny thing, and then you might as well use a yeah. toaster oven. But also, um, if you're just hitting it with a heat gun, imagine you've got a hood with your heating element uh, over your plastic in a normal machine. That is going to keep the heat in while you're warming it up if you're just hitting it with a heat gun all of that heat escapes mm -hmm. and uh it's more of the oven uh aspect covering it keeping the heat in that gets the plastic to melt than just the direct heat so using a heat gun i found just doesn't work yeah too much heat escaping. yeah and then it would have to be tiny anyways so it's because uh, we have the toaster oven one that one works great mm -hmm. and we borrowed eric's uh eric uh core geek has a larger to toaster oven vacuum form setup so he came down we got to use that but i just need a like slightly bigger than that just to have you know for reasons uh someone in the chat um sunny sama just posted vash's gun that's awesome he's working on that's Look really that. cool Ah, oh, I love it. I want to make that someday. 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 That's on your wish list. So, let's see here. Oh, Habiteer Workshop. Hopefully, we answered your question. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I don't remember what we were talking about. <laughs> um, Mayday wants to know, how should a helmet fit your head? I think the main thing with a helmet is it needs to be comfortable. If it's even a tiny bit uncomfortable when you put it on your head... And you're like, oh, that's not so bad. I'll just deal with it. An hour or two into wearing that thing, you're going to have a headache and you're going to hate everything about the world. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, make sure it is large enough to fit your head comfortably. And then if you can put some sort of like upholstery foam padding in there so that it rests on your head nicely and in, in the correct spot and, and comfortably, that's what you want to aim for. Yeah, usually the way I do it is I have, we have just chunks of upholstery foam that we've gotten over the years and i snip off little pieces of it and we'll just hot glue them loosely in the helmet like don't like add a boatload of hot glue and make sure it's permanently going to stay there forever at first 
So you just add a piece in there, try the helmet on, add another piece somewhere else, try the helmet on until it stops being wiggly and, and make sure you can look down and bend your head backwards and have it not slide off. Um, I like, and I'll, I like trying to use as little as possible instead of just filling it with foam because you want that airflow in your helmet. You want to make sure that you're not going to get too warm. Mm -hmm. There you go, Mayday. Yeah. Hopefully that helped you out. Um, back to the... <laughs> back to uh, uh, Vacuum Form Gate 2016. This is what Hey Patch was referring to. So this is a box that you put your... Uh, looks like your Harbor Freight uh, heat gun in there. And if it works, it works. Uh, but notice how it's fully enclosed, so the heat, heat from that isn't going to escape. I wonder if that's ABS plastic. Because be. like, I think with PETG, it's just such a high high temperature melting thing. Oh. I, I That's that's my guess. Because with styrene, it seems like it it doesn't take very much for it to start uh, deforming. But mm -hmm. my PETG, I just held a heat gun next to it and just watched it not, yeah. not warp. That's that's a really cool uh, cool way to do it. Basically, that's a, that's making a cool little, setup. your own little oven, and then that I imagine that the the plastic droops down into that box, and then you just whoop, pop it right over. Very cool. Thanks for sharing that. Hey, Patch. Let's grab the next question here from Toasty Knickers, which is a really awesome name. I I don't have Toasty Knickers right now. It's very chilly down here. Uh, how well does turning a three D print into a molded piece work for you? Would you rather three D print multiple of the same? piece and clean them or clean one good print and mold it if i'm going to make more than let's say three of a thing then i am going to mold it and cast it because the the workflow for turning a third 3d printed piece into a mold is pretty great like it's not that hard and it produces some really amazing results um so yeah, if I'm gonna make two or three or more of something, I will make a mold of it. Like the ring. Actually, I did a mold of this guy so I could do it in a different material, so I could do it in metal. But also, I could make more, which I'm gonna have to because this pewter will eventually get all beat up. I like the idea too of um, for your ring, for instance, you could do a wax casting, and then maybe we could yeah. do a sand mm -hmm. mold thing with and like cast it in a higher melt metal. Yeah. Yeah. So because I, having the mold doesn't just mean that you can make more copies of it. It gives you flexibility. Yeah. You can um, 3D print a part or, um, yeah, 3D print the piece, but the finished part is a solid urethane, which is a lot more durable than mm -hmm. a 3D printed piece. There's a neat video, I don't remember where it was, of the Iron Man armor pieces. I think that was when Stanley was poking around the oh, show. Oh, at, um, at Legacy. Legacy yeah. FX. Uh, yeah, they were showing off the molds for some of the Iron Man armor pieces, and they were like, well, yeah, the Masters were 3D printed, but we cleaned them up, and now we have these molds, and we can cast uh, uh, structurally sound urethane yep. pieces out of it, or rubber ones for the mm -hmm. stump people. So they cast all these different kinds of uh, Iron Man suits out of it for all the different needs for the movie, which I thought was really cool. That's, this is uh, this is great. Yeah, it's awesome. They let him paint this helmet, and he just blasts the crap out of it with paint. Instantly. Blah, just. <laughs> All I can think is like they had to go back and, or maybe that was like an off casting. <laughs> like, no, here, have a, fun here I'll dump that link in the chat there. That's a fun video to go watch. Yeah. But they do some uh, molding and uh, some casting. Yep, there's a mold for one of the um, Iron Man face mask pieces there. Yeah, the mold itself is really cool, too. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great video to refer to when someone tries to be all like, well, 3D printing is going to replace making stuff, and it's like, no, it's a part of the process. It shows how yep. super useful it is, but also we still mold and cast yeah, things. Yeah, especially if you're going to turn it. So so if you print it in something rigid, you can sand it nice and smooth, and then mold it and cast it in a rubber. So you've got lots of different options if you're going to mold it. Yeah. Um, the Boolean Gemini that I'm building, I'm not going to mold that. I only want one of them. So I'm. it doesn't need to be heavy or durable. I'm going to finish it and put it up on the wall. So I'm not molding and it's casting probably never going to leave the house. Probably yeah. never going outside. It's not a convention prop. No. Um, oh, uh, Jeff in the chat there is going to Reynolds. The Reynolds in Burbank. The coolest place in the world. They're so cool. Um, he did some 3D printed spaceships, and he's going to mold and cast them. Well, I am very excited to see those. Sweet. Don't be afraid to, to, to chat them up. They love... They love yeah, those they guys love, are awesome. Yeah, they're, they're super great people. 
Just go go bother them. All right, let's grab. We got one more question. Last one was from Toasty Knickers. Thank you, Toasty Knickers. Tim wants to know, when you're ex uh, expanding your skill sets, can you set aside time to learn and practice, or do you have to do it all on the job? Usually, I pick something that I don't know how to do and incorporate it into a project. So, like, the metal casting for this ring, um, it was a couple of things. I got to use the Form 2, so I got to learn how to use that machine really well. I got to learn how to 3D model this. Um, I printed it on the Form 2, and then I got to learn how to bumble my way through some uh, metal casting, which I hadn't done before. So this project was a, a couple of different skills that I could get my toes wet on and end up with a really cool finished product. I think it's really rare now if we're learning some kind of skill set that it's not involved in a project that is producing content. So even if it's just us, like me playing around with cardboard on the live stream yesterday, uh, it, it, was, it turned into content. It wasn't just me... Uh, learning cardboard on the side. I, I got to hang out with the prop tarts. They gave me some great pointers. And I got a video out of it that will go up sometime. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's great, though. It kind of... Having, having to produce content like that with these new skills kind of forces us to actually, you know, stick with it. Like, Fusion 360 can be really frustrating at first, especially if you've never used a 3D modeling program before. But knowing that I have to get a video out of it, it's like, ah, I got to... Gotta, gotta learn it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that was my challenge with the Boolean Gemini was I wanted to model everything in Fusion 360. And I figured if I finished an entire space gun, then I, I, along the way, I would learn most of what I needed to know using that application. And I think I did. Uh, and I learned a lot of things that I don't, that I know, now know I don't know. And then I can investigate and learn better for the next project. So I do. I try and loop in new skills with whatever upcoming projects I have. Toasty Knickers is happy we like their name. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's all the questions. We got to get moving here because we're going to the Soto Maker Space here in Seattle. And I hope I see a couple of you guys there. Oh, Trina Taco just submitted a question. Oh, we can grab one Bo more. Bonus question. Bonus question. All right. Let me uh, throw it in there. Awesome. Boop. There you go. Tran Otaku says... Uh, what do you do with spare 3D pieces? I have, like, a box load of test prints, and I don't know what to do with. Uh, yeah, we have That's the, a good question. You can see this this box by my left ear is our box full of test prints. And it just keeps getting more full <laughs> of stuff. So we don't know. We haven't made a decision yet. <laughs> I have. Um, I'll, I'll grab this really quickly. Oh yeah, our little our little peoples, our little mans. Yeah. So sometimes I'll do experiments on our 3D prints that we have just laying around that we're not using. Like this was the one that used to be the surface of the sun colored. Yep. I had some extra. I think this was Epsilon Pro, and uh, so I just brushed it on there to smooth out all the print lines to see how it would work. He has drips on his hands now, <laughs> big blobby hands. Yeah. And then I had some, oh, what was it? I don't even remember why I was using it. Oh, I was I was doing something with uh, fluorescent blue pigment, and I put some in one of our extra little bottles in uh, XTC 3D, and it did pour down into the bottle, so now I have a little glowy thing. Here's some other ones where I put, I put just finishes on 3D prints just to see what they would do, like little leftover yeah. stuff. I have a feeling a lot of these things are going to get thrown into boxes and sent to our high-level patrons. That would be really cool. <laughs> um, I, and, like, when we were doing that, um, the Reinhardt helmet, a couple of the printing pieces failed, so we used those as tests to see how uh, we could glue it together, mm -hmm. the best method for, you know, attaching giant helmet pieces. So yeah. testing stuff, but then otherwise you just hang out in a box. We have the same problem. Uh, it's mostly PLA. Yep. I mean, it'll eventually decompose, right? Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, bonus question. Thank you, Tran Otaku. And thank you, everyone else, for bringing your questions today. You guys are awesome. This sh show would be nothing without you. Um, you guys are great. Thank uh, you so much. That's about it. We're going to run off to go hang out with some makers here in Seattle. We're going to go see Star Wars tomorrow. We just bought our tickets. Hope you guys get to go see Rogue One this weekend as well. And thanks so much for hanging out with us.
We'll see you all on the next Prop Live. Bye. Bye.